All right, this is what it is, man. This video is going to be about me addressing the comments because I got too many comments in that last video. I do answer my comments like I do answer my phone. You know what I mean? So if somebody got an issue, call me. If you got a comment, you put it in. All right? So let's start this show up and get this thing right. All right? Yeah. You know what it is. Unique Mecca Audio, man. Let me let me let me address this. Now I'm gonna get a little aggressive, so you know, you 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 know, y'all can tap out if y'all don't like this. I'm gonna keep it 100, cause y'all missed the point yesterday. I got a lot of comments, a lot of phone calls. I didn't I didn't get to answer my phone for the last day and a half, so I apologize, apologize to those of you that didn't answer the 9176809091 number on the phone on the screen because I do answer my phone, but I left it in my man's car. He had to go out of state. I had to wait for him to come back. But let me say this, man, because, you know, y'all misinterpret it. My channel, so y'all understand, y'all go to channels and y'all get to hear people speak their mind about, you know, from a civilian point of view. I'm a civilian now, but I also like to give the youth and the elders that's in the game or thinking about getting into the game, the rules to the game to hopefully prevent them from going that route. That's what this channel's about. It's not an anti-snitching show. It's not a hate rat bastards. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's about identify yourself. I'm identifying myself. Let us know who you are because we all like chameleons. We walk the face of the earth in the human form, but our characteristics fit certain things. Now, under no, 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 no circumstances am I defending Puffy. Let's get that straight. I am not defending P. Diddy, Puffy, Love, Sean Combs. I'm not defending none of that. What I'm doing is breaking down the street code on how this works because so many people is out here in the world yelling that they are a part of the street and they bout it, bout it, they slide and they doing this and that. Now, if that's what you're doing, I'm talking to you to let you know the rules. Now, to the civilians watching, so y'all understand, okay? I'm twisted. I'm burnt out. When I mean burnt out, don't mean I'm tired, mean I'm burnt out because I was implanted with the rules, principles, morals of the game, the code of the game. And that's what I'm letting you know. This don't have nothing to do, nothing whatsoever to do with, you know, not snitching, who telling. I don't, I don't care nothing about that. I mentioned Reggie White because he's a cop and he's spearhandedly trying to recruit gangbangers, you know, to lock up another black man. I just see Puffy as a black man. Forget my history with Puffy. Puffy is a black man. O.J. Simpson was a black man. Donald Trump is a white man. I'm going to explain all this to you. Uh, Zimmerman is a white man. Let's start with let's start with the white men first. You know, they don't like when I say European, certain people get offended because, you know, they trolls and look for anything to criticize. I'm just speaking in perfect form in unison to you. George Zimmerman was guilty as crap, but he raised millions for his GoFundMe page for the white people that supported him even though they know he was guilty. You saw what unfolded on the Capitol in January 6th with your own eyes. You heard what came out of Donald Trump's mouth with your own eyes. And, you know, this with your own ears. Now, check. But they still support him. He got 99, you know, uh, 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 what those charges. Donald Trump got 99 charges, you know, pending in the criminal court. 
and his people still support him. And he set out his own mouth. Let's march on the Capitol. However he try and spin it now, that's what he do. Listen, Donald Trump freed me. I have nothing against Donald Trump, so I'm not biased nowhere. I'm just giving it to you 100. So just take your YouTube glasses off right now and just put on your human glasses. There's two sides out there. There's those that's criminals and there's those that's civilians. If you say you're a criminal, under no circumstances do you tell. If you say you're a civilian, under all circumstances, you know what I mean? You must tell to, re to, to, to support your base of civilians. I'm a civilian now. I'm not, I'm not encouraging anyone to not tell. But I am saying that if you're talking about you on this criminal side, there is no telling. It don't matter if Donald Trump is guilty of sin. It don't matter if Zimmerman is guilty of sin. It don't matter if Puff Daddy is guilty of sin when you're on the street. You roll with your base. That sounds harsh, right? But I'm just giving it to you real, you know? I got a lot of comments, and I love the comments, and I want to thank you all and give you all a round of applause for the comments because you was real respectful in how you respectfully disagreed with me. Round of applause. All right. All right, come on, come on. Let's get this popping. Calm down, y'all. Let me, let me talk, let me talk. So what I'm saying is now, I, I, I'm letting you know now, right? I'm not saying that Puffy played no role in, you know, in Biggie or Tupac or whatever with all these things y'all got going. I'm not saying that, you know. I'm not defending Puffy, you know what I mean? All I'm doing is letting you know that when you're on the street, you ride with your base under no circumstances do you tell. I don't care if Puffy's guilty. I love Tupac. Tupac is one of my favorite rappers and, and, and was a very good friend of mine. But Tupac set out his mouth when the first responder approached them, who shot you? He said, F you. That's it. That means he wants that to be solved under those circumstances. You understand what I'm saying? He wanted to be handled on a street level. I told y'all, I don't do no, fa no faking, no lip professing, no none of that. You know, I told Tupac when he came to me to ask him to show him how to play birdie. I'm sure his homies in the live, y'all remember who you were. You was in the blue, um, uh, uh, um, what's that? Like, 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 like custom Ford Chrysler van with the bed and all that in the back. You know what I mean? And you pulled up on me over there by 149th Street in the Bronx and you told me Tupac wanted to meet up with me because he got a new role and he want to follow me around to play birdie. You know what I mean? Y'all know what I'm talking about, you know, that was driving a blue van. I don't even remember your name because no disrespect, didn't give a crap because you was in your music lane. I was in my criminal lane. I explained to Tupac myself out my mouth. This is the role I played with him. I've always been a gangster. I told Tupac straight up, if you want to roll with me, you could roll with me, but I'm not going to have your entourage because this is not a show and tell. This is not a, you know, bring, bring your gangster parent to class day. You know what I mean? But if you need my help, I'm going to help you. You know what I mean? And he said, now nah, my homies. I said, right there, we done. So he went, and I told him before he left, I said, Pop, check. If you enter into this world to roll with anyone, whatever you see must stay with you because we keep everything inside, you know? So you want to roll with me. So if you see me selling five keys, I don't need you to go telling nobody you see me selling five keys, you know? But I'm not taking you, so I don't have to worry about that. But just remember, under no circumstances do you tell, brother. So whatever you see, it's like Colonel Klink said in Hogan's Heroes, I see nothing and I hear nothing. You know what I mean? And he understood that. And he made a lot of mistakes from my point of view along the road while he mentioned in records about certain comrades that, you know, in the street with me. And I didn't agree with that. You know what I mean? But it took time for him to grow. It took me a lifetime from being on the street since I was about nine years old to learn these codes. So I didn't expect Tupac to learn it overnight. So, you know, I, I love the way and I'm saying it, y'all ain't gonna like it, but I'm just keeping it 100. I love the way he told the police, the first responder, when they asked him who shot you, F you. That's your job to figure it out. My nigga's gonna handle it. You know what I mean? Now, it turned out that, you know, 
his homies didn't want to handle it. So instead, you know, Reggie White picked it up, a cop. As he should, he's a cop, you know? But once he became crooked and him and his daddy saw this selling weed from California to Tennessee and all of that, now you're a criminal. And then now you turn around and you recruit what was supposed to be reputable gang members like Mob James to roll with you and do your bidding to get uh, police justice for Two Tops murder when Tupac didn't want police justice. That's why he told your own comrade in your gang, because you know the men in blue is a gang. You know, he told your comrades, F you, he's not telling you nothing. And now you're on YouTube every day talking about this. I saw a video that he put up, because yeah, I'm subscribed to him now and I watch him because I can't believe the crap that's going on out here. Where he said, oh, Keith, he, he's not, he, he ain't going to be able to afford no lawyer this. He's not going to be able to do that. So he's going to get a public defender. Woo, one for us because the public defender is going to throw him under the bus. Come on, pick a side, man. Once you decide to send drugs to Tennessee and become a criminal, that's where you pick that side. But now you're trying to jump back over. You don't, this is not hopscotch, my brother. This is not hopscotch. Now, about Puffy, I don't give a crap if he's guilty. People mention all types of things that I'm going to mention. You know what I mean? They say uh, Puffy was scared of Suge Knight and uh, Tupac, you know? I'm going to say this from my opinion to show you that I'm not biased and I'm not into none of that. Yes, I believe Puffy was scared of him, you know? But that's because Puffy is a civilian that went to school grew up in Mount Vernon to make a better name for his family. Now, they said also in the comments that his daddy snitched. You understand? I don't give a crap. That's the daddy. They handled it on the street with, shoot, with street justice. Rest in peace. You know what I mean? To those that lost their lives. You know what I mean? Now, you know, along this terrible path, I'm talking about Tupac Biggie, so I'd be specific who I'm seeing. You know, these brothers lost their lives and they was trying to make a career and they was young and nobody gave them the codes and the rules. So they picked up the wrong path that they went down that they couldn't handle. And this was the outcome. Now, they handled Puffy's father in the street. They didn't do anything to Puffy. If they had a problem or inkling that Puffy might grow up to avenge his father, then they would have did what they had to do. They left Puffy out of it, so that means he's exempt, and Puffy followed the path that his daddy wanted him to go down. His daddy made those choices, and then he made another choice. This man been paying taxes and high-end people and all that, and you rat bastards gonna say because I'm pointing out the facts that I'm defending them or supporting them. No, I'm not defending them. I'm not supporting them because he's not on my team. He's a civilian. So I want y'all to understand that, you know? Then they mention, you know, uh, uh, Reggie White, you know what I mean? And then Gene Deal, you know? Let's talk about Gene Deal. You understand? So you understand. Gene Deal identified himself to us in the streets as a probation officer. So we knew not to do nothing in front of him. Period. Gene Deal never saw so drug, never saw with none of that. You understand what I'm saying? So, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not defending him either because he's just as culpable as Reggie White. I was just speaking on Reggie White and y'all threw Gene Deal up, so I'm going to speak on it. You know what I mean? I told Gene Deal myself, I don't agree with what you're doing. Just like I told y'all, I don't agree with what Reggie White is doing. I do not agree with what what's his name is doing, with what Gene is doing. Now, as far as, you know, Gene Deal, if Gene Deal decides to break the law and he's getting locked up, I'm not driving his big ass in my car to no goddamn prison to turn himself in. You identified yourself who you was. You, you, you know, you straddled the fence. You did what you had to do. You hung with us. But remember, a parole officer have to go in the hood to check on their people. Gene came in the hood to check on the people on his client. And in the meantime, when we had homies that their parole officers was getting on them, or even the ones that was, you know, 
doing whatever they were doing that was wrong that Gene Deer was out there looking for, we was able to talk to Gene and say, yo, Gene, come on, man. You know, you're in charge of them people's, man. You, you, we allow you to come around us. You know what I mean? You're around us, you know? We know that, you know, you official in your capacity, but we asking you, brother, do what you can to spare the homie. And he did that. You know what I mean? That's equivalent to me hiring the police. You know what I mean? To let me know when they're going to come make a raid. You know what I mean? To uh, get my people out of jail when they get locked up. I paid $10,000 a week for that. If somebody got locked up, I had a cop that I called, and he went out, found out where, you know, the homie was at and who arrested him and how much it'll cost to get him off of that. That's a service. That don't mean the cop is on my team. Gene Deal is a parole officer. My man violates parole. I call Gene Dean and uh, Gene Deal and tell him, yo, Gene, you know, my man violated parole, man. See what you could do. Gene never charged us a dime. He said, man, you know, I'm for the people. You know what I mean? It's just I chose this life. He went to school for that. We knew that. Puffy went to school to become a businessman and a mogul. And he did that. You understand? And he stays in his lane. Listen. Listen. For the record, I don't agree with what Gene Deal is doing. You know what I mean? I don't agree with what Reggie White is doing. You understand? I don't agree with what none of them is doing. But, you know, when I speak on the incident, how I was intricate or intertwined in the, in the Tupac situation, uh, the biggest situation, you know, I called Gene because I knew that Gene had access to Puffy. And I know that Gene knows that I'm a criminal and he's a government official. And what I say to him, he's not going to say to anyone else except for where I tell him to take it. And I told him to take it to Diddy and them to let him know, don't go to California to vest up. That's it. He said he did that. Whatever happened after that, I don't know. That's why I even stated when I when I when I uh, interviewed Gene Deal or whatever I de dealt with him with, I said yes, and I'm saying it for the record on my channel as well for those of y'all that you know want to play these rat bastard and troll games. And I told him for the record, straight up, this was my words to Gene, and I told y'all this on YouTube. I don't know the puffy you're talking about, you know. I know that Puffy is a college kid and a businessman. And he's always treated as fair. When my uh, when I got locked up, he gave my child's mother a job at Bad Boy. He gave my brother's uh, baby mother a job at Bad Boy. You understand what I'm saying? And that don't mean that I'm going to defend him for that because he's still a civilian. He's not in my lane. So whatever he do, you understand? Whatever I do, I'm going to keep it away from him. Because I'm going to tell you straight up, I don't trust Puffy either. I don't trust Puffy either. So don't sit here twisting it that, you know, I'm protecting Puffy. No, I don't trust him either because I don't trust none of you civilians. But that don't mean I can't deal with you because when I go through the toll booth and I pay my toll, I can't sit there and say, oh, you're a civilian or a criminal. Oh, you're a rat bastard. Uh, or you're a criminal. I pay my money, and I stay in my lane, and I take care of what it is that I'm supposed to take care of, and that's it. When I go in the store and I buy my Black and Miles, when I go in the store and I buy a damn lighter, whatever I do, you know what I mean? I'm spending my money with what is supposed to be a civilian. So if somebody owe me money, and they come in the store, and I want to shoot them in the face, I'm not going to do it in front of that store owner because I know what he'll do. If I got an issue with somebody and I'm going to stab him and Gene Deal is dead, I'm not going to do it because I don't trust him because he's a government official. So I know to keep my business separate. But when Reggie White incorporated these so-called weak gang members like Mob James to come with him and say, oh, we're going to get Tupac. And, and no disrespect. Let me say this, man. Let me Because I don't disrespect nobody on my channel. I just keep it 100. No disrespect to, you know, uh, Mob James, even though, you know, 
I totally, you, you, you know what I mean? I totally just don't like rats. You know what I mean? But, but I'm saying this to say, you lost your brother, big bro. I lost my brother to the war. My brother was a casualty of war. But that don't mean I'm going to hold my brother's comrade, you know, responsible for my brother's death. And say, I hate him because he ran with my brother and he died. No, my brother was a casualty of war and death happens in war. It was a war on drugs. My brother got two shots in his head, whole brains blown out. They bought pictures, eight by tens, with green matter all over the, the floor with, with, with me handcuffed and shackled to a seat to a concrete table. I mean, a, a metal table. Where I had my hands like this, all this was freezing. And the way they had me, I, 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 just trying to keep it off the table was, you know, had my hands numb. Then the cuffs were so tight. But this is how the devil wanted to torture me. So this is to you, Mom James. You know, rest in peace to your brother because he was a straight gangster. But your brother don't approve of what you're doing where he's at. Just like my brother wouldn't approve if I became a rat bastard and started working, you know, with Gene Deal, you, you know what I mean? To try and, you know, belittle the next man and bring him down. All I did was just stamp that yes, because Gene spoke on it before I even came home because he's a government official. And that's what they do. They talk. That's what they paid to do. We know that. So he let it be known that I made the phone call. And I let it be known that all that other stuff you talking about, Puffy, on the, on the YouTube, I don't agree with it. I, I, I don't see him as that. And I'm not going to get into that. And I can't stamp the negativity that you said you witnessed because he's always been 100 with me, my peoples, even got homeboys that still run with him. And Puffy ain't do nothing for me since I've been out. Puffy don't owe me nothing. Nothing. What I'm doing is pointing out how the code on the street works. My mother was, like I said, and I'm being redundant, you know, was tied up, kidnapped, pistol whipped, tortured to find out where the bag was. My mother called me, not 911. I went down there and handled it. Didn't call 911 myself because I know this is what it is. All I did was ask, Mommy, you all right? She said, yeah, baby. I said, all right. And she already knew what that meant. Don't ask no questions because she's a civilian, but she has a son that's a criminal, and he has different codes, and she don't cross over to my code. My mama never said, oh, don't do nothing about it. I don't want you to go to jail. I don't want you to get killed. None of that. She just said, okay, baby. And that was it. So y'all thinking I'm defending Puffy? Come on, man. I'm a gangster. Puffy is a civilian. Period. You know? I'm a civilian now. But at the same time, y'all need to know the codes and rules and principles of the game so you know not to enter the game, so your mind won't be twisted like mine's that somebody do all that to your lovely mother or your loving brother. And you could say, never will I call the police. All they wanted me to do was tell about my brother's operation in Virginia. Those of y'all that know me know that my case wasn't in Virginia. My brother brought keys from me. Send my indictment so you rat bastard go find somewhere else to play. My brother brought keys for me in Virginia. He sent the girl up. This is my indictment, all of my uh, uh, PSI and everything, so go look it up. My brother would send up 100000 200000 to buy keys, and we'll give it to the girls and put in the car. And, you know, being that, you know, he wasn't getting as much money as me, it would have been a, a, a loss for him. He decided to send the drugs down in implements of between three and 15 keys at a time. So if they grab three, he still got these over here. Instead of putting everything in one car, because not like he going to sell it at one time because he was living in Virginia. They picked me up from Virginia and brought, I mean, from New York City on 150th between Frederick Douglass and Adam Clayton that we call from the street 7th and 8th. 
But this was really seventh thing, uh, seventh thing McCombs, because the road forks right there at one fiftieth. For those of y'all never been there, you understand? This is a serious game, man. The feds came and pulled me out my cell in ADX when the four walls was trying to close in on me, and offered me food and cigarettes in ADX. Said they was going to buy me lunch and we could talk about it and want to know what happened, you know, with my brother for me to help them solve his murder. And I told him, take me back to my cell. I don't work with the enemy. And they said, well, I don't give a crap. <laughs> we got a free vacation. We brought our kids with us there at the hotel. So thanks for ending the meeting early. I said, take it how you want. And I hope your kids fall off that cliff. And they turn beet red. I said, when you go look at those mountains, you know what I mean? In the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, I hope your children fall off. Because that's how real it is. I give a crap about them. Just like I give a crap about, you know, you know, uh, uh, getting justice for Tupac in the court. You want justice for Tupac? Handled the way it's supposed to be handled. The way Tupac wanted it handled when he told the police, F you. Tupac could have solved this case. 26 years ago. You don't see Tupac's family on here every day spearheading this, oh, get, 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 uh, get a conviction for the killer of my lovely family member. The Honorable Dr. Shakur came out of prison. You didn't hear him not one time mention anything about none of this that we're talking about getting justice for Tupac in the courtroom. I know Dr. Shakur personally. When he found out he had cancer, I was in Victorville, California with him, and they, he caught me out to the yard, told everybody to get around from the table because he always got an entourage of youngins and elders that want to get his jewels, just like y'all here to get my jewels. When everybody walked away, he said, man, you need, I'm dying. He said, man, I love you. I respect everything you're doing and you representing and, you know, you knew my son and you gave my son the best jewels when you told him that if he crossed that line, you know what I mean, that there's no telling. He said, they get ready to send me to Kansas City. I got cancer. I don't know how long I'm going to live. And at this time, Dr. Shakur was doing five laps a day. I mean, five miles a day running in the prison yard. Ask anybody who's with him. He was in his 70s doing, fuck, doing five miles a day. And they told my brother he was dying. He came home. He had a voice to get on YouTube or 2020 or the local news or whatever and say that he wanted justice for his son Tupac. He never did that. But here go guys that say, entertainers, you know what I mean, and street dudes, that saying that Tupac, we want justice for him in the courthouse. And he didn't even want it. His daddy didn't ask for it. If he did, y'all send me the video. Send me where his daddy said, go lock up a, you know, a, a, another black man, because his father was on pro-black. The same way they're representing Donald Trump with 99 charges, 99 counts this man got about uh, on him, about for y'all tell me it was 96. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, his people still support him. George Zimmerman killed an innocent black child. His people still support him, you know? Puffy's name is mentioned in having something to do with Tupac, Biggie, Robin, you know, uh, what's that, Robin Masters. His name is mentioned in uh, Kim Porter's death because she was allegedly going to put out a book that was going to air him out. I don't give a crap about none of that. My brother's dead because God chose to take him at that time because of what we chose to do, because of the path that we chose to go on. Tupac, Biggie, and Kim Porter is all dead. Rest in peace to all of them. For the fact that God felt it was their time to go for whatever reason. Karma is a mother. Kim Porter was a lovely woman. Tupac and Biggie was, was, was the greatest rappers. You understand? The greatest rappers. Let's get that straight. 
But at the same time, they're human. We all make mistakes and choose wrong roads to go down and karma is a mother. That don't mean that karma is going to come from something that Biggie did, Tupac did, or Kim Porter did. It may have came from something that their ancestors did that skipped a couple of generations and came to them. I lost my brother. My brother got shot in the head two times, and I'm telling you, I would never in my life assist the government in getting their justice because their justice is not for us. They've always been against the black people. That's why they had us in chains. That's why they had us on the auction block. So I don't need justice in their courtroom because they've never gave us justice. I broke the law and poisoned my community. We even had clowns say, oh, you, you love the community so much, you, you sold 330 kilos of crack cocaine. You mother effing right. Because I love myself more at that time. You have to be selfish like that. Listen, if me and my brother, you know what I mean, is out at sea and the raft is sinking, I'm going to worry about saving me. And then I'll take care of his children. I'm going to worry about saving me. It's called self-preservation. When you're on the street, you can't give a crap about nobody but yourself. You're number one. If you're dead, you can't do nothing for anyone, and that's it. So how could you help the ones you love if you're dead, what they tell you when you get on the airplane? All of y'all been traveling, you know, on these airplanes. They say when that, when that, when, when that mask come down and the flotation device come down, grab your seat and use that as a flotation device and put the mask on yourself before you help anyone else. So I'm going to protect me. The Europeans, the white men, because y'all don't like Europeans, the white men that made these rules and laws on the airplane, they even told you, save yourself. Put the mask on yourself. Don't put the mask on your baby. Because if you put the mask on your baby, the baby crashes. Who's going to take care of the baby? Only way to take care of the baby is to save yourself first. Only way to take care of your family is to save yourself first. I don't give a crap about no one. That's what the street is about. So if y'all want to be a part of the street, this is what it is. I'm telling you this so you don't be twisted in the head like me when you say that, you know, I let my child die before me when I was on the street. Right now, 59, you know, I give my life. I give my life for my mother who's 88 years old to live one extra day where I stand right now. You know, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, cause I can't lie. I felt the same way back then, you know, about my mother, but that was the only person, cause I'm a mama's boy. But anybody else, I wouldn't give my, I wouldn't, you know, give my life for my brother and I love him to death. I'm gonna protect me so I can protect my brother. Because if I die, how's he going to have my protection? And I know y'all don't understand that. If anybody watching this video, let me get in the camera. If anybody watching this video disagree with what I'm saying, you're 100% right. I'm twisted in the head. But this was implanted in me. And I don't want the youth and the elders watching this, male and female, to get caught up thinking that it's a sweet ride to run the streets. So I'm telling you, don't do it because I don't want you twisted in the head where you don't care if your own brother die, where you don't care if your own children die. Back then, you know what I mean? I'm going to give you one raw, you know, because I like to ride, you know. And I know y'all going to hate me for this. I'm going to give it to you. This is how raw it is on the street, you know, so you understand, you know. My man... My man was crying, you know what I mean? My man was crying because his child had asthma, you know? And I told him, dog, what are you crying for? The little nigga's still alive, and you still go make another one that don't have asthma. <laughs> get over it, nigga, let's get the bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
let the mother take care of the asthma, go make another baby with the mother or with another chick, but just bring another seed into the world to correct, you know, the karma that God gave your child through whatever you did or your ancestors did. But we're not going to dwell over trying to figure out why God do what he do. Picture me in ADX worrying about, God, why did you take my brother? Why did you let him go and get killed? Oh, God, come on, man. I would have drove myself crazy. I just said, God, thank you. And protect my brother wherever you choose and feel that he deserved to be on this journey. And that was it. And y'all think I'm twisted for that. And you're right. I am twisted. And I don't want y'all to be this twisted in the head to feel this way. You know what I mean? Now, you know, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not calling out the people going against Puffy. Because I'm going to tell you, I don't give a crap about Puffy. Let's get that right. You know what I mean? He's a civilian. I don't give a crap about him. But what I give a crap about is the morals and principles to this code that you have people saying that they're part of this code. You understand? And they're entertainers and civilians and all that, but they're saying they're part of this code and they bout it, bout it. You could be a civilian and still be a thorough dude. I know civilians that'll whoop me. I know civilians that'll whoop me and three of my homies because it don't make them a coward. It don't make them any weaker. But stay in your lane and I stay in my lane. And this entertainment shit, this is, this is not my lane. But when you have dudes that say that they're in my lane crossing over into dealing with this get justice for Tupac crap, now that's my lane. Because that's not the code and principle that I gave y'all 26 years in federal prison. Serving life plus 20 with no chance of parole. You know what it's like when they lock you in a cage at the end of the night and your man, before you go in your cell and he's getting ready to go in his cell, he said, man, you know, that's another day locked down. I'll be home in a minute. You know what I mean? I only got another 15 years. I only got another 30 years. You know what I mean? I got 29 years and 363 days. That's what he's saying. He has something to look forward to. I had nothing to look forward to but dying and being buried in a pine box out back. Speaking of pine boxes, you know what I mean? Let me tell you one so y'all understand how real this is. When my brother got killed, he got killed out in Seattle, Washington. I tried to claim his body, but he got killed. Right after I got sentenced and I was doing life with no chance of parole, so they said someone else had to claim his body. And then they was going to attack that person and use all the alphabet boys that they got from the IRS to the DEA to everything else to target that person. So even though my mama, my baby mama, my sister, wanted to claim my brother's body from the feds out in Seattle, Washington. I told them, no, leave them. I'll get them when I get home. They never said, but you got life in jail. Because they know that this is the code that I represent. I don't need them to walk into the minefield of having these people attack them for my brother. Because whoever claim, tried to claim that body, they would have attacked him. So I had to let him keep the body. Right now, as I talk to you, Mr. Mob James, your brother is buried at a beautiful funeral. My brother is buried in a pine box with a federal number, my nigga. And I'm not crying about it. Stop your blood clot crying, man. Man up! Even though it's too late because you done flipped and ran on the other side with the cops talking about you want justice after you done ran and said you was a street dude. That's what my issue is. Don't get involved with the street. You can't say now, Mr. Mob James, oh, I'm a civilian, so I'm going to work with the police. That means you, I mean, that means you was never a gangster. You was never a mobster. 
I could go work with the police right now and get them to release my brother's body, but no, I'm going to do it with lawyers and get it the right way because I don't need them to touch my brother's body. I'd rather my brother perish where he's at. And a matter of fact, when I die, they could put me in a pine box next to my brother and I go down with my brother. Whether we go to hell or heaven. And this is the mentality that I don't want y'all to have. And for y'all to say, lock up Puffy, lock him up. That's another black man you want to throw in the white man's system, regardless what he did. I don't want them to throw the killer of my brother in the white man system. So why would I want them to throw Puffy in the white man system for an accurization, for rumors? Whether they true or not, I don't give a crap. I don't care if they true. So I'm not defending them. But I'm a gangster, damn it. And that's what it is. You know, we, we don't play these games, man. I'm not defending that man. I don't give a crap about Puffy. I give a crap about the morals and codes of the street that I'm telling you don't get involved with. But if you do choose to get involved and you want to be one of the 5% or 2% or whatever percent you want to put on it to be, you know what I mean, in that life, just know you got to be cold hearted, my nigga. And like I said, if my own mama got murdered in front of me, somebody ran up in the house, killed my mama, whatever they did, I'm not going to testify. I'm not going to do it. Period. I'm not going to do it. And my mama know I'm not going to do it. Like my brother knew I wasn't going to put it on for him so I could get out. Either way, when I was in prison, I was free. I was never incarcerated mentally. They had me physically locked up, but that's I was, this was a war, man. And then they say, you know, let, let me speak on it. That one of the other comments was, I love the comments. And like I said, I love y'all. Thank you for the comments disagreeing. Because by you disagreeing, let me know that I'm doing my job. You're supposed to disagree with me because I'm all the way twisted. I'm dead wrong in a civilian's point of view. But from a gangster point of view, from a street morals and principle point of view, I'm 100% right. And you niggas trying to analyze me when I don't analyze you for telling. I'm not going to analyze, you know, you know, uh, uh, Puffy for whatever they say to happen with him and Shine. Because I'm going to tell you this. Somebody put in the comments that, oh, Puffy paid somebody to testify on Shine to give Shine a gun. Blah, 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 and all this about Shine, right? And then the other day, I was at a party in New York for Puffy. And Puffy wasn't there yet. Shine was coming out the club, saw me and Big Ock out there. Big shout out to Big Ock, you know what I mean? saw us out there, and cause they don't know who I am. I've been gone 30 years. You know what I mean? So Shine walked me in the club that Puffy was throwing his album release party to because Shine showed up to Puffy's party to represent Puffy and his release for his album. So if Shine don't have an issue with Puff for allegedly doing this and rumored that, whatever it is, I don't give a crap. That's they civilian business. But when you talking about this code, my nigga, that's my business. Shine don't have a problem with Puffy because he was at Puffy's release party and got me in the, in the joint. And I got pictures of that, so Shine, you know, which I ain't got him lying because he's a straight man, you know what I mean? And, you know... Sean got me in Diddy's party. And somebody put in the comments, Sean did this to Puffy, Sean did that to Puffy. They in another lane and they understand whatever and they have they understanding so that's them. Just like me G dealing, you know, or talking, I ain't gonna say dealing, me, you know, me talking to Gene Deal. I know Gene Deal is a government, you know, worker, government informant, whatever you want to call them, you know, but I stay in my lane, and I know who he is. 
So I'm not taking Gene Geo's side. I just didn't mention because I was talking about Keefe D and not just Keefe D because he's a rat bat. You know he a rat bat. But Keefe D don't went. Oh, I forgot to hit the gunshots. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know Keefe D got in bed with this dude. Rob J, uh, uh, what's it, not Rob J, what's his clown name? Uh, Re, the, the cop, Reggie White. That's why I make sure I call Reggie White a cop because that's his lane. His gang is the boys in blue in California. We know that it was, it was, it, 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 it was corrupt in Cali. From what, from when the, the, the first camera caught somebody. They didn't even have cell phones. They caught it, must have caught it with a camcorder. You know, somebody ran in the house, got a big ass camcorder, threw it on their shoulder and caught those police beating Rodney King like a runaway slave because he drove a hard day that I can't phantom for the life of me how that car went 120 miles an hour. You know what I mean? But that little Hyundai, Hyundai's cost $4,500 back then. 5,000 tops, brand new from the dealer. And this car, this man had it going, what the police said, it might have been true, who gives a crap, going 100 miles or better an hour. Then when they got him out, they took turns beating him, and we watched that on our TV. And nobody said back then why they was beating him. Well, they are beating him because he had warrants, and he should have stopped, and he shouldn't have been speeding. We didn't do that for my generation. We just said it was them against us. Now we having the same thing play out, you know? You had George Zimmerman, you know? They gave that man over a million dollars in support for killing one of our own. And I get up here on YouTube, I give y'all these jewels, I give y'all the code so you know to stay away from to save your kids and even possibly your life. And I say, send a cash app if you like the game. I don't give a dollar, two dollars. And then we get these rap bastards and flip flop women in public, cowards and trolls, saying, oh, he's begging like Reverend Knight. Nobody said George Zimmerman was begging. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, when they gave him his mugshot, that's the worst thing a president could have is a mugshot. When they gave him his mugshot, they did that in Atlanta to discredit him and bring him down to the lowest form. But Donald Trump is one of us, whether you, you know, whether you want to admit it or not. But he appeased to the other side. Before Donald Trump got in office, everybody in New York loved him. When he said he was running from office, everybody said they didn't like him because he said that Mexicans was coming over here because they was criminals, murderers, and rapists, and thieves, and America went wild. Oh, my God, I was somebody running for president. I'm going to say that a group of people is this and that. And Donald Trump stayed to the course of who he was. He's a New Yorker. He got the gangster persona because he ran with the gangsters and mobsters in New York. So he spoke his mind. And the people loved it. They loved it so much they put him in the White House. They love him speaking his mind so much that even though he got 99 counts pending against him, they're going to put him in the White House. You see how they protect their own? And now for people making these accusations and, you know, some may very well be true. It all may be true about Puffy, but I don't give a crap because he's a black man like us. And I've said from day one, and I'll say it again, I don't wish the dudes that, because no females did, that the dudes that testify against me do a day in jail. I don't even want to see my rats in jail. If it bothered me that much, I'll take care of them. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's that simple. If it don't, I keep moving. And my mother always told me that the best form of revenge, the best form of vengeance, is what my lovely mother, 88 years old, that I wouldn't even cooperate with the police, you know what I mean? if she got murdered. And I know I'm twisted for saying that, but my mother said the best form of revenge and vengeance is success. And that's why I'm just going to be successful and have my rats hate me. I don't need to do nothing to them. I want them to stay alive to watch my growth. 
Look how nice I got my background and all that. You remember when I started? I did it with a white wall. I did it in this room, in that room, with a bookshelf there. Look at this. I'm growing. And I know that my rats don't like it. Because I did 26 years in jail. They did a couple, like maybe two, three years, five years at the most. And then they was out to go on with their life. They had 21 years more than me out here, and I've far surpassed them. Where I don't have to run and full out an application for a job and hope that, you know, the ops, meaning the citizens, you know what I mean, at Walmart or wherever, Bloomingdale's, hire me for a job. I don't want nothing from them but what I pay for. So I created my own lane. And instead of y'all supporting it and say, man, my Instagram is up there. Let me follow Unique and Unique Make Audio. His cash app is up there. Make sure you push it. It say it was created in 2020. There's no one in his last name. Let me send the brother something because he been through hell and he's trying to do it the right way. Let me support my brother. Instead of they say, oh, he's on YouTube begging. But you're getting up nine to five to go to a job. But you got your... Cash app written on the screen. You a coward. So you're scared to just say, send me a cash app because I need that. And yes, I had millions. But it was a war on drugs and me getting this million. So they took it all. So now I'm back out here. And yes, Mr. Reggie White. Yes, Officer Mob James. You know what I mean? Yes, Mr. Keithy D. You know what I mean? I'm proud. Because I didn't have to run to no white man for no job. I know how to get my own stream of revenue. You got a black man like Puffy that made it to the top that you're supposed to be applauding him. Calm down, man. Calm down. Relax, y'all. Relax. Y'all supposed to be applauding him that one of your own that look like you made it. But instead, you're saying, oh, investigate the way Kim Porter died. You know what I mean? Oh, investigate the way he, he did such and such with the Masters. Investigate what he did with Biggie's ball. You know what I mean? He was robbing him for his Masters. He was this and he was that. Investigate what he did with b -b 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 Tupac. Investigate what he did with... <laughs> And that's one of our own, and he did what he had to do to go to the top. And from being on the street, from being a criminal, it, everything goes, my nigga. Everything goes. And that's why I'm telling you, don't go on the street, because you don't want to have this mentality. And if you feel I'm wrong, that everything don't go, that means you are 100% right, and my mission is accomplished. If you feel me saying it don't matter what Puffy did, to get to the top. You understand what I'm saying? Because it don't matter to me what Escobar did to get to the top. None of that, you know? It don't matter, none of that. What they did to get to the top, because in my world, when you a criminal, everything goes. And I can't say because he's a civilian, he should go to jail because he broke the law and, you know, I'm not a civilian, I'm a criminal. And if he's a civilian, he should go with criminal justice. No, you do what you got to do to get out of what circumstance you get in. It's called survival, my nigga. Y'all not used to hearing it this real. So y'all say, oh, he's def I'm not defending Puffy, school Puffy. I'm defending that he's a black man and the cold the civilians that want Puffy to go to jail, you have a right to feel that way. You're supposed to feel that way from where you stand. You're supposed to feel exactly like that. And that's why you pay your taxes. That's why you went to school and I never learned to read and write. I learned to read a triple beam scale before I learned my ABCs. And you want me to sit here and have empathy. Empathy. For anyone. When I was fending for myself. For survival. Like the example I gave when they dropped the mask in the airport. When they show you in case of emergency. They say put the mask on yourself. I've always put the mask on myself. Screw. 
Screw the next person. And screw whoever don't like it. This is my Dark Vader moment. You know what I mean? That's why I'm wearing the black hood, you know, and I got to put a little colors in it. But that's what it is, man. Just so y'all understand, you know? I mean, then they said, you know, OJ, uh, you know, uh, you know, allegedly OJ killed a white woman. Puffy, you know, allegedly is involved in, you know, in killing the, the, the Marvin Gaye rap. It don't matter. They're black men and we support our own. When you're a criminal. So those of y'all that civilians, you have a right and a hundred percent right to feel that way. Tupac is my man. My brother is my heart. But I'm not going to wish my brother's killer in prison. I'm not going to wish my brother's killer be thrown into the hands of this, this biased justice system. That's what's biased, the justice system. When you say I'm biased because of Puffy, no, I'm just giving you the facts when you're on the street so you don't go to the street. If y'all don't share this video with everybody you know, you're responsible for anything that happened to you because if you wind up getting shot by a stray bullet, your cousin, your dog, your mama, whoever gets shot by a stray bullet because you didn't show this video because maybe the shooter would have chose to put his gun down and said, I don't want to be like that burnt out black ugly nigga with yellow teeth on the bottom. For those of y'all want to talk about it, I stayed in prison 26 years, you know what I mean? Where at times they didn't even sell us commissary. We didn't even have toilet paper. You know, let me ride, you know. I've been on here long enough. I'm gonna give you one last ride to just make this an even hour, you know. When the officer got killed out in California, they locked us down for six months. They didn't sell us no, they didn't sell us, they didn't allow us to go to commissary, they didn't allow us to get stamps to write our family. I stayed locked in a cell for six months. Only way I could feel water on my back was to put some in my cup and pour it on my back. And then take the rag and wet it and put the rag backwards like this and scrub my back with the little water that I was able to put from the cup. Then take us some more and try and rub the rest out. And then I ran out of soap. They didn't even give us soap for six months. They didn't give us toothpaste for six months. So, nigga, you know, that want to say oh, his teeth is yellow. I'm putting it out. Yeah, see how yellow they are? You know what I mean? See these up here? I left these in Lewisburg. I left my whole top four front teeth in Lewisburg. They knocked them out with an axe handle, and I'm trying to prevent y'all from going through what I went through. They didn't even sell toothpaste for six months. They didn't open the door for six months. They didn't have toilet paper for six months. When I used the bathroom and they ran out of toilet paper, I had to take the rag and wring it out under the thing. Luckily, I had a prison store, so I had 50 bars of soap and, you know, such and such. But I didn't know how long the lockdown was going to be when the cop got killed. So I was selling items out my store to the other inmates to make sure the other convicts had something to eat. And I didn't raise the price on them because I know now that we're going to be locked down. I kept the price the same because we all in the same barrel. Just like you rat bastards and flip-flop wearing in public trolls is in the same barrel of crabs trying to pull any black man down that look like you that make it to the top. P. Diddy not supposed to have a million dollars. I'm supposed to have it. How he got it? Look how Kim Porter died. Look what he was involved allegedly in Biggie and Tupac and this. And he, he took the masters and May said this and that. And Locke said this. And I love all those artists. And he might have did all that. But being criminal in the street saying you bout it, bout it, you don't give a crap how he took it from them. He got it and it was about him getting it. Just giving it to you raw. And if the nigga robbed me, I'm the law. He did, he did what he was supposed to do because I'm dumb enough to get robbed, I got robbed. But now it's up to me on the justice that I want. You understand what I'm saying? All those rappers had an opportunity to take their gripes to court 
with Puffy. And that's not snitching going to court because you're going for your rights. Like they say, oh, you strike somebody on YouTube is ratting. No, you have a copyright. And this is all about eating. So they could have took Puffy to court and exposed them for stealing their rights. Instead, they took him to the court of social media to degrade his character. Come on. Where we do that as a people? We got a saying in Jamaica, you know? Like, you know, I'm going to give you another. I've been riding too much. I'm going to wait over, over an hour. I'm just going to give you one last one. I'll keep saying one last one, right? But, you know, this is the way I just like to make sure. I'm like a professor giving you all jewels. I was in Lewisburg, and I had all the girls come to see me, had all the weed, and I looked out for who I wanted to look out for. And somebody that was cool with somebody I was looking out for that was cool with me, that was my brother, you know what I mean? He tell my brother, yo, um, how that nigga giving me weed and he ain't giving me no weed? You know, and he kept griping about me not breaking him off. Like I owed him something when I'm the one that went out there and swallowed those balloons and brought them back into prison and, and got bagged for it. I got locked up in the shoe for attempt introduction of balloons of weed in Lewisburg. Yes, me. I'm the one that sat in the hole for that weed. So I give it to who the hell I want to give it to. But anyway, when dude kept complaining to my man, yeah, 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 and my man was waiting with me, and my man, he's trying to geese my man up to roll with him because that was his man too. You know, as soon as I come down, my man, you know, rest in peace, Prime Minister, he said, see him there? You know what see him there mean? If y'all Jamaican know me, I'll talk about it, you know? Prime tell him, see him there. That mean instead of telling me, there he go. That's my man. You my man. You got an issue with him, nigga? Go, go tell him that, you know, you want yours or go take it from him. Don't tell me you're going to take it from him. Go take it. See him there? I ain't going to get involved. He his own man. He chose to give me that, and he didn't give it to me to protect him. He gave it to me because he chose to give it to me. Because he could protect himself. So if you want it, you, you feel that he owe you something or he should break you off with something for whatever reason, see him there. <laughs> that means see him there. Go deal with him, you know? And on that, I'm going to tap out, man. Cop the book of Roaring Harlem, man. Cop the book of Roaring Harlem at roaringharlem.com or roaringharlem.com. Subscribe to my other channel, Unique Mecca Audio TV. I'm going to give real gangster street perspective on relationships. So all you but I love a dog story, you know, subscribers and followers, that's where I'm going to do them at. All right? So now I'm about to tap out, been on here long enough, man. And, and, and it's expected, you know, for the, for the rat bastards and flip-flop wearing and public trolls to sit there and say that I was defending Puffy. For the record, I don't give a crap about Puffy. I care about our people and the cold that I spent 26 years in federal prison for that was implemented in me from I was nine and letting y'all know don't get involved because you don't want to have to live by this cold, honor this cold, think about this cold, so don't try and analyze it because you never will. Now, you know, for that, let me tap out, man. I cheers, 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 the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime, the crime. Oh. Hey. Out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in hall. Uh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. The Instagram page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get jewels from a kingpin. Uh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do uh -huh. it. Did not pay attention, would be stupid. Talking about a man 
man that probably put your grandfather on. Probably the reason that him and your grams got along. A man that generated millions on the block, did his time, never squilling to the cops, make an audio. Like two G's in the nineties. Drop top beamer so shine. I let Shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dead. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie Linda Ed. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth, them. They the truth them and bless up to all the rudiments. Hey.